Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, information session on the program proposal writing workshop. My name is Simon Grimley, and I work with the International Cooperation Division here at NASDA, and I'll be um, moderating the session this afternoon. I'm very pleased to be here, and I'm delighted that we've had such a good response to today's event. I think there are more than 220 that have registered. So uh, we encourage you to ask questions throughout the webinar, and you can type those questions into the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. And then in about half an hour, we'll have a Q&A session um, where we'll do our best to, to answer all of your questions. So let's, let's get started. Um, I would first like to invite my NASDA colleague, Dr. Lily Erwilajit, who is the Vice President responsible for international cooperation at NASDA. And uh, she will uh, open the session with some, some, some welcome remarks. So Dr. Libby, sure. over to you. Okay. Good afternoon and very warm welcome to you all. I'm very pleased that my organization, the Na National Science and Technology Development Agency or NSTDA, has the opportunity to be a partner in organizing these program proposal writing workshops for researchers in Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Thailand. A special thanks to our partners, the University of Cologne in Germany, the German Academic Exchange Service, the German Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development, and the Dialogue on Innovative higher education strategies. The ability to prepare strong research funding proposal is essential to the development of any researcher's career, no matter what your field of research. The aim of this program workshop that we will be discussing today is to train researchers and young PhD holders in developing a promising research proposal for national or international research funding. So training including, uh, includes online coursework, a virtual three-day workshop, online coaching by our experts, and a five-day workshop in Thailand. So one of the real advantages of this workshop is that you will have the opportunity to tailor your proposal to the funding institution of your choice, and all researcher fields are eligible. So I encourage I strongly encourage you to apply to this program, and I have no doubt that you can benefit enormously from the training being offered. I wish you a very productive session this afternoon and success in your application. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lilly, for the, for the welcome remarks. Um, I would like to now pass the floor to a good friend of NASDA's, um, our colleague, Dr. Georg Verwein. He's the director of the DAD Information Center here in Bangkok. And um, he is a, he's a key guy in this program mm -hmm. in making it happen. And uh, so we'll let him uh, introduce the, the elements of the program to you. So Georg, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Simon, um, for, the, for the kind introduction and for being a partner of uh, DAD for so long in general, and uh, particularly um, today, a partner uh, with University of Cologne. And um, well, this this program is really close to my heart. It's um, it's kind of my baby um, because um, I, I was one who came up with a name programmed. So if you think that's a silly name, blame it on me. Um, well, I. Um, well, we'll try to, to introduce this uh, program to you, um, both from a DAD perspective and also from a University of Cologne perspective. So the idea is really uh, to pave the way, to make it an easy way towards um, application for an international research grant. Um, normally, DAD is a, is a grant agency in itself, but um, so today we are, uh, well, going once back and uh, trying to, to, to assist you in writing a successful 
application. Um, you can see here that ProGrant is really um, a joint effort of uh, several agencies who, who joined hands. So the, the Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development gave the money uh, to DAD to come up with clever ideas of uh, how to improve the international cooperation through better, higher education management and similar programs. So uh, that's how the DA's program uh, came to life, the Dialogue on Innovative Higher Education Strategies. And we are offering a number of higher education trainings. So there are trainings for international offices, how to internationalize a university. There are programs for deans how to manage a university um, and well, today we're talking about a program for researchers, how to attract international funding to their university. And um, yeah, so you can see uh, the University of Cologne is um, operating the program of TAD and they have uh, developed this content together with Provis, a, um, a researcher, a consultant, agency, which is actually a spin-off of um, Cologne professors. Um, yeah, just a brief word about TAD. Um, our motto is change by exchange. And um, yeah, we really try to facilitate the, the mobility of all levels of academia, ranging from undergraduate student to university president. Um, and uh, to do that, we've got a network of, and you can see here that we've got a bigger regional office in Hanoi, um, and one big office in Jakarta, and then we've got four smaller offices in Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh City, Kuala Lumpur, and Singapore. And, um, well, if you are in Thailand, then obviously I am, I'm your guy in Bangkok, uh, if you are in Laos, Myanmar or Cambodia, then technically uh, Hanoi will be responsible for you, but. Georg, we've lost, I think we've lost your connection. Yeah, so, well, anyway, we've got a few offices and uh, wherever you are, when you are listening now and you have a question, you can always get in touch with us. Yeah, um, just to let you know, there is this network at um, this point of uh, contact, if you like. Cool, you should see the screen now. And um, so 2019, that's the last data I have. We uh, funded about 325, well, about exactly 325 chamber of ties going to Germany. So we try to keep a nice balanced um, numbers and we are supporting all fields of research. So not just hard sciences, but also humanities and social sciences, whatever. And uh, we support basically everything from a short research stay over a sandwich PhD where you have two supervisors, a full PhD, postdoc, um, researcher mobility, and um, yeah, and, and funny things like today, exceptional programs for us, um, because this is really um, going on a, on a meta level. Now, the aim of program, uh, Dr. Lilly already said it, is um, to help young researchers from any field developing a proposal for national or international research funding. And on top of it, we are also building a network of researchers. Yeah, so the, the experience so far shows that it's very important to know people in, in your neighboring countries. If you want to apply successfully, um, international cooperation becomes more and more important. And um, so it's, it's good to know people in your neighboring countries. The program will have four steps. So the first round will be 
um, if you are selected, will be online self-study. So you receive access to a really well-prepared online course. Um, it's uh, 14 modules and uh, it's including interactive exercises. It includes self-tests. So um, I have tried. You could not just click through it, but you have to really carefully read it and answer questions to get the next uh, module. And um, so that is that is uh, well a few a few afternoons I would say yeah so it's calculated for about twelve hours of self study and uh, with this hopefully knowledge um, about uh, proposal writing you can apply for the next stage and you should always apply your knowledge to a real life case study yeah so it's not academically at all, but this is a very practical training. You need a good research idea for yourself or for your institute or a, a team. Um, with this program, you should be able to apply for typically for international funding and you use this case um, to apply your, your knowledge. Yeah, So you, you improve this proposal that you already hopefully you have an idea and uh, well the 30 best proposals will then be selected and those 30 um, researchers continue to stage two that's a remote seminar it's a three-day seminar that um, yeah will be will be held via zoom and um, it will be full day training so it's not just a small uh one hour stint like today but um the idea is really to uh, to give you a full day training and to work together on your very practical proposals then um there is further e-learning so uh, you will not meet every day in person but you can get in touch with the experts and you can continue to work on your proposal. So that will be over the summer months, um, July, June, July, September, October. And uh, in October, there will be um, the uh, seminar two. That is where you meet in Bangkok for five days uh, with your colleagues from, from the neighboring countries and with the experts and uh, you can then polish your proposal and really after this training uh, you should be ready to hand in your research proposal um, and uh, yeah so ideally i would say just one year from now uh, we could be looking forward to um, to having a lot of successful grant proposals uh, from from those of you listening and uh, who go through this successfully. Well, who can apply? I have I have tried to do these slides with uh, emojis only. Yeah. So um, the target group, we need researchers from any field. It can be hard science or it can be humanities or social sciences. You need to speak English. Yeah. The Training will be held in English and the proposals will most probably be written in English. So English is a requirement. You must be affiliated to an, a university or a research institute. Yeah, so um, and this research institute must be in one of the four countries here. So uh, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar or Thailand. Well, there is a financial contribution. AD and our partners, we take care of the course material, the infrastructure. Well, you can see all of that. Um, so the, the important thing is you should know that for the second part, you will, you or your home institution uh, will have to contribute 300 euros. Yeah, so that's uh, your contribution uh, towards the cost of the um, 
the training and uh, DAD cannot cover local travel. Yeah, so if you if you have to travel to the airport in Myanmar or um, if you have to come to Bangkok within Thailand, um, that would be your own costs uh, your, at your own expense. But DAD cover flights to Thailand. Yeah, so that, um, but this is only for those in the final selection. Yeah, if you're among the 100 selected participants for the um, self-study learning in the first two, three months, then that doesn't apply to you. It's only for those who participate in the um, uh, in the remote seminar, in the e-learning, and in the final seminar. Okay, the application is really simple. It is four pages. You need a two-page expose explaining your research idea. Yeah, the very first draft of your proposal, just an expose of two pages where you describe what you want to do, how you want to do it, with whom you want to do it, why this needs to be done, you know, basic um, research expose. You need an academic CV of just one page, yeah, so don't put all your steps in life in there. Um, and you need a support letter, which is not uh, very specifically specified in the uh, in the call, but uh, from my experience, uh, the higher up the level in the research hierarchy at the university, the better. Yeah. So if you get your um, vice chancellor for research, or um, if you get your um, dean for research, or whoever it is, or your university president or something, uh, to sign this support letter, that would be great. Yeah. So that we see it is not just you as an individual who is uh, struggling for, for better support, but that you have uh, the backing of your university and that your knowledge will possibly contribute uh, to the entire institution as well. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot. If you have any questions, don't, don't be shy. Just get in touch with me, please. Thank you, Georg, for the comprehensive overview of the of the program and its requirements. Um, a couple of questions have, have come up here. Uh, one with regards to eligibility. So yeah. we have a we have a question here of somebody who's who's a dentist, has a graduate master degree, they're about to start a PhD, a PhD scholarship next year, and they would like to know are they eligible for this program? Uh, for this for this coming year, I would say, in most settings, that is below the threshold that we are looking for. So ideally, it would be um, PhD holders. In some countries, if you have very few PhDs. Um, I mean, we do have countries where you can become a dean without a PhD and where you are actually doing a lot of important research without already holding a PhD degree. Um, in this case, yes, that would be okay. Yeah, I mean, it is the wording in the call is a bit vague. Yeah, PhD holder or having equivalent research. feel that you are one of the more important researchers at your university, although you don't hold a PhD, then please apply. Yeah. But if, if, if everybody else has a PhD and you're just beginning your career, then probably um, you don't have a chance. Thank you. Another question regards eligibility. Um, <laughs> the question is, the program says it's a program for young researchers. What is the age range? <laughs> yeah, um, I know. Uh, <laughs> well, there is no age range. 
I mean, um, it it has a bit to do with the uh, return on investment. Yeah, uh, very. Uh, it sounds a bit cynical, um, but if if you are already fifty five and um, then we invest a lot in the training and then you're about to retire when you finished, then it was probably too late. Yeah. So, I mean. If you are well established and you have a big chair of, you know, teaching at the university and um, you have already access to all the funds, then probably you don't need it. But your chances are better if you are, you know, dynamically doing a master's, doing a PhD, and now you're teaching and researching and uh, now you feel, you know, yeah. <laughs> so there is no specific uh, limit. Understood. Um, another question here, and I, I think I know the answer, but, but I could be wrong. So this is a, a, a young Thai PhD holder. They're currently working in Japan uh, on a contract there, but they would like to ask if they meet the program's requirements. Yeah. Um... Well, probably you wouldn't be you wouldn't be the first choice if if I had to do the ranking. Uh, well, luckily I don't have to. Um, DAD is a bit vague here as well. Typically, the country where you are affiliated is relevant. On on the other hand, we also have difficulties if, let's say, a, a German researcher researching in Thailand would apply. We would also say, well, uh, not ideal. Um, so it would depend a bit how long you have been in Japan and you know how strong the affiliation is. Do you want to return? Would it be a long-term benefit for Thailand or would we just be supporting Japan, which is probably not necessary? So, yeah, it's, it's not ideal, but I mean, you could still try. Um, And another question here, um, again, an eligibility question. So can foreigners affiliated with a Thai university working here in Thailand, uh, are they eligible to apply or do they need to be a Thai national, a Thai passport holder? It's not about nationality. Yeah, so it is really about supporting the researcher community, let's say. So if if we feel that yeah you've you've been in Thailand for ages and or in in Myanmar or in in Laos yeah uh, you, you've been there for ages and um, now yeah you're you're just part of that university and and you want to apply for that research funding yeah sure no problem okay let's I think maybe we'll we'll move to the next session. There's a couple of other questions here, but I think we can we can address these in the Q and A. Uh, and after we've heard from from a beneficiary of this program, uh, his name is uh, Dr. Tong Woi Yen. Uh, he's based at the University of Kuala Lumpur, and he's been through the program. Uh, program, he survived it, and I think he's uh, he's benefited enormously, and, and he'll now tell us just how he, he benefited. So I'd like to, to join me in welcoming Dr. Tong uh, from, from, from KL. Dr. Tong, over to you. Hello, everybody. A very good afternoon. So you can just call me Tong. So um, thank you for choosing me to give this testimonial. I'm, I'm really so proud of this. So basically today, um, I would like to share with you my, a bit of my program experience. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay, so basically, this is my personal my research journal, uh, my research journey. So basically, I finished my I completed my PhD in two thousand fourteen, and in two thousand fifteen, I joined UniKL after working uh, one year in industry. So two thousand fifteen, I joined uh, University of Kuala Lumpur as a senior lecturer. So in 2015 and 2016, I tried very, very hard 
uh, to apply grant and do research because I realized that uh, I joined academia because I love doing research. I like I like research. So um, in 2015, uh, and I wrote seven grant proposal. And 2016, I wrote 11 grant proposal and I submitted all of them. And don't be surprised, all bad news. All the grant proposal were rejected. I feel very upset. But in these two years, I become a, like I also become a postdoc of myself. So um, I work on very low cost project because why? Because I realized that I need to maintain a good publication record. So I use my own money. So I purchase some very low cost chemical and I work on very low cost project and publish in just Scopus Index Journal. So this is my journey. But um, another site in contrast, to, uh, I'm so proud to share with you in 2017. So I secured four national grants and two international grants in a year. I submitted six proposals and I got them, all the research grants. So of course, you're wondering what happened in 2016? What causes this transition? Of course, you'll be, oh, what happened? So I will share with you my story. Next slide, please. So what changes me is actually um, this seminar. Uh, the transition, the one that changed me uh, is because um, in 2016, I joined a, pro uh, a workshop, a seminar called Program in Jakarta, Indonesia. So this workshop was participated by 30 participants. So I learned how to um, write proposal, of course. So I improved my proposal. So by sending a same proposal, uh, with a, a proposal with a similar research idea to the same funding agency, but I write it differently. So in 2016, it's a rejection and 2017 is an acceptance. So I realized that this makes a lot of difference. So I keep on sharing this course with my friends, with my colleagues, because this is a really a good program that will benefit a uh, young researcher. So these are some of the photos that we uh, took during the seminar. So we have our trainers from Germany. So uh, we have also, also a very wonderful culture evening. So we have participants from Malaysia and Indonesia. So next slide, please. So um, if you ask me a million dollar question, so what did I learn uh, during um, the program seminar? So of course, besides the self-study phase, I went through, I finished the seminar one, e-learning phase and seminar two, I completed the, the, um, the course. But if you ask me, what did I gain during this, pro uh, this program, program course, I will tell you four things. First is the techniques. So why techniques is very important, let us share before. So uh, I have the same research idea and I just write it differently, different way. I apply the techniques that I learned in program course and I resubmit uh, the proposal to the same funding agency. But surprisingly, they accepted my proposal. From there, uh, I learned uh, I learned that I realized that the techniques of writing is very important uh, in terms of uh, writing a grant proposal because there are some of the uh, very important principles like reviewable oriented writing, how to write how to how to write a problem statement, how to write a summary, how to write a layman summary, and how to prepare a budget. So, program is a course that will provide you a comprehensive and a complete guide to write a research. Then give us the tips on how to write a good proposal. So this is what I think that I really gained uh, from program because I really learned a lot of the techniques. So of course, uh, when I learned all these techniques, I go back to my institute and I share with my colleagues. So many of them have applied the techniques and they also benefited. So, so I would say that if you spend time, uh, invest your time in this um, program course, not only you will benefit and colleagues and your colleagues also will benefit it. So uh, another uh, second factor is uh, confidence. So, you know, like when in 2016, you wrote 11 grants proposal and all were rejected, you are in a very um, down uh, emotionally, you are very down emotionally. So basically, I will start questioning myself whether 
I'm suitable to become a researcher. But uh, program helped me to regain my confidence. I would use the word regained. So um, by applying the techniques um, that I learned, I talked to the trainer because besides the technical technical aspect, the trainer also give a lot of encouragement. Um, find they even um, find um, a suitable funding agency for us to submit the proposal. So they give us all this kind of support. So thank you, really thank you to DAAD. So next slide, please. So the third benefits that I have is actually, uh, we call it program networking. So why this networking is very important because programs is actually a very big, it's a huge family. So you will have um, members uh, of friends from all over the world. So um, basically this is, uh, this is my personal experience. So this is myself, me, myself in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So I can work with a Thai researcher from uh, uh, from Biotech Council, from Biotech Center. So his name is Ken. So, and also another researcher from Indonesia, from another researcher from Indonesia, her name is Anita. So, and also the fourth one, another researcher uh, in Vietnam, her name is Anne. And also she linked me uh, with another of her colleagues. So actually four of us, uh, five of us with four program alumni. So what we did is actually we wrote a proposal. So in 2018, uh, we wrote a proposal. We submit this proposal to ASEAN Science, uh, Science and Technology Fund. We call it STI Fund. Uh, of course, um, but too bad, uh, we went through the second phase and third phase they rejected our proposal. So we tried to improve the proposal so five of us, we work together, we apply uh, the program techniques, uh, the program techniques. And um, last year, we secured another grant from ICGEP Italy. So it's International, International Center of Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. So we, we are really feel, we feel very happy uh, on that because this grant requires international collaboration. And program is, uh, uh, a family that bond us, that bind us together. So this is what this is what I benefit also. So the sec the third thing is actually networking. Okay, the next slides. So the next slide. Okay, so the fourth the fourth benefits that I get from program that I gain from program is opportunities. So um, after you have completed the program course, uh, you are a part of the alumni. So, uh, so uh, the uh, program TAD will also organize some of the courses uh, for some of the courses for program alumni. Uh, program alumni. So, in order to apply those courses, so uh, apply to these courses, you have to be how to say uh, graduated. You have you need to complete you need to complete your your program course or the three seminar. So um, in 2018, I joined uh, the alumni seminar. So a regional expert uh, and a regional expert workshop. So uh, DAD sponsored my travel to Cologne to attend the seminar, to learn how to do trainings. And also I was given the opportunity last year to speak in um, Euro Access, European Research Day. This is also, um, I share my, I share my program experience uh, during uh, during the talk with about five five to six hundred audience. So besides that, I also joined um, in two thousand eighteen. I joined the seminar in Chulalongkorn University. So I'm the regional expert. So basically, um, these are the opportunity given. So by attending this seminar, so I can share my knowledge and of course I can expand my networking. So in this year, 2020, so my university, uh, University of Kuala Lumpur, we became the host of uh, Program Malaysia 2020, but too bad because of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So we have to do it. Uh, we have to do remote seminar. So it's 100% online. So these are the opportunities given. So next slide. Is so today I have uh, with the research grant that I have, so with my research partner, so uh, we already have our own laboratory. So we have a group of students. So there are 11 of us, we are working on the research topic. So um, for me, I would say that uh, program is really a very good cause that really, uh, that help, um, uh, that help young researchers to grow. So I would say that program helped me to make my first move uh, 
uh, in research, meaning that to secure the first research grant, then after that I expand. So I start buying equipment, more chemicals, and taking more students and even a post uh, a postdoc fellow. So all started from program. So I think this is if you are a young researcher that struggled like me uh, three, two to three years ago. So I would strongly encourage you, please apply to this course. So this is a course that will definitely help you and you will benefit from here, like many of my friends. To that, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom, for, uh, for a great presentation, for your enthusiasm and for your, 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 your positive views on the program. And, and forgive me, maybe I missed this, but the proposal that you actually developed during the program course, did that get funded one way or the other? Because you mentioned you got a grant with some program alumni, um, the the ICGB grant. But what happened with the proposal you actually developed during the course? Oh, I submit uh, I submit the proposal to our national grant and I got it. Very good. Yes, Very good. I submit to the national grant. So, but but after that, I know some friends in the program. So we took uh, we worked together to write another proposal, Very which good. is part of the funding. If maybe I can just just ask uh, for Georg's comments because Tom, you, you highlighted not just the training you got in proposal writing, but the networks you built, the other opportunities that, that that arose because of your participation in the course. So maybe I can ask Georg just to talk a little bit about the the um, uh, the additional benefits of the course, uh, the alumni network, etc. Georg, yes. Okay, so basically, uh, what we have is actually yeah. um, it's okay. Uh, we have okay, we have uh, uh, because uh, during the program program we have spent uh, we have spent I think almost a year together uh, from seminar one e learning phase seminar two and we have developed a very very good and very mature relationship. So we we know each other very well. So after that, uh, uh, based on this relationship that we built uh, during the program uh, program course. Then we started to make uh, more collaboration, more collaboration. Then uh, we started to write more proposal, more proposal and submit to, to other funding agencies. This is one thing. And also, I would like to say, um, uh, based on alumni, because uh, we have a very, um, very active uh, WhatsApp group. So if you need um, some, need to use certain equipment, uh, if you need to need some support in your research, you can always find somebody to help you because the program family members they are ever ready to help you to assist you. This is my this is my personal experience, and of course DAD also um, organize um, um, various activities uh, for program alumni like train the trainers workshop, uh, regional expert workshops. Uh, these are very um, useful workshops that um, help uh, help us to become the multiplier. Uh, to share the knowledge that we learn uh, during the program course. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Uh, can I just, I, I just want to go back to Georg. Um, a number of questions have come up here relating to people, you know, who are interested to apply. They're in the middle of their PhD. They don't yet have a PhD. Um, can, can, can they apply, Georg? I think you addressed this earlier, but maybe you can you can um, answer this once again, Georg. Um, yes, yeah. So it's it's not ideal, um, but you can always try to to focus on the important role that you already play in in the research in the field. Yeah. So you, I mean, if you already hold a PhD, then that's relatively easy. But if not, then you have to make a very strong point uh, why you are an important player in in this field of research in your country or at least at your institution. Okay, so the, 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 the holding a PhD is is not a a must, but uh, if you don't have one, you've got to really show that you are um, doing significant research in your field. Correct. Yeah, that's that's the point. Yeah. So the, the easy way is just to show off your PhD and that's it. Uh, or you have to prove that you have equivalent research experience. 
Yeah, I mean, there are countries where it's extremely difficult to obtain a PhD. And if you say, okay, well, I, I, I am a pillar of research in this field, in this country, although I don't have a PhD, that is still possible, yes. And another question here, this is um, uh, about somebody who has their PhD. They, in fact, have an administrative position at their university. They're a dean of a graduate school. Would they be eligible? Um, and I'm thinking back to your comment about return on investment, you know, and, and, and how far you are along in your research career. So could you answer that, mm -hmm. please? I, I think so, yes. I mean, um, in, in this case, it, it would be beneficial not just for their own research, but I mean, typically this is somebody who might apply for, for a big grant for an entire research group. Um, so, um, yeah. Sounds, sounds good to me. Good. We'll be happy to hear that. Um, another question here relates to the supporting letter and who should that be and to what extent does that uh, influence the evaluation? So if I was to get a, you know, a reference letter from the prime minister, do I stand a better chance than my lab director, for example? Um. Yeah, Prime Minister. Um, well, I, I mean, I think the, the optimum would be university president or something like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, dean of dean of research or or director of institute of research or something like that is is fine as well. If it's if it's just the head of department, um, that yeah, I mean, then you would doubt. Hey, how how strong is your backing? Uh, within the institution, so I would I would try to go for for dean's level or um, or, or vice president or something in that range. Very good. Uh, I want to go back to to this question about you know what happens after the program training. Uh, Tong talked very enthusiastically about the networks that he built, the additional opportunities that arose. Maybe you could just provide your comments on that. So. There's the training itself next year, but what are the sorts of things that, that one might expect beyond that? Yeah, so um, we are uh, on a mid to long term perspective, moving away from, you know, training more and more and more people in this program, uh, program and we are, you know, trying to um, teach those who have participated in the past, uh, like Tong has, and uh, well, train them to to spread the news and uh, multiply the knowledge. So we are really um, shifting the focus slowly towards uh, a train the trainer um, approach. So uh, when you get in this year, <laughs> that's that's your perfect chance to become one of the uh, potential trainers, uh, let's say next year or the year after next year. Uh, so that that could be a nice uh, side effect that you would still uh, make it into that group. And then maybe DAD sends you to a neighboring country and, uh, you know, I mean, we we organize all kind of of trainings and events, and honestly, it's it's you're not you know you know you're not chained uh, to DAD. You could also say uh, to somebody like um, Nasda, <laughs> for instance, hey, look, I I, I went through that training, I uh, gained uh, this and that international grant, and uh, and then I went to this train the trainer uh, session, and uh, now why don't we? As, as as Thai researchers, as NASDA, or we as Cambodian uh, Research Institute, uh, why don't we run such a training uh, locally? And uh, then, yeah, that, that would be, I mean, that would be our, um, yeah, best case scenario. Good, thank you. Uh, there's a couple of questions really relating to, to quota. So is there a set quota for applications from Cambodia versus Thailand, Vietnam? No. No, very, very simple. No, there is no quota. Um, 
um, well, yeah, I think it's 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 fair to say uh, we are very happy about every single qualified um, application from neighboring countries. I know it is difficult. Um, I mean, there are not too many postdocs running around and being fluent in English, and you know, it's yeah, and. On the, on the other hand, you know, we, we don't want to get into that downward spiral. We, we need to get out of it. And if, if we want to create um, successful researchers from Cambodia, from Lao PDR, from Myanmar, we, we need to give them a helping hand. And uh, in many cases, that means training them, helping them how to apply for, for big money. Yeah, so so, I mean, DAD does not dish out huge research sums. Yeah, I mean, we have a tiny postdoc research scholarship, and you know, we we are well connected to the Humboldt Foundation, etc. And they they have more money. Um, but if you want to apply for something like uh, European uh, ECR or uh, Marie Curie or um, Mm. Fulbright or Newton Fund or whatever, um, our experience is you need training, you need mm. experience. And, and to get you there, we would be very happy to get you on board. So honestly, I mean, chances are very good if, <laughs> if you apply. Okay, because there's actually, the, 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 your answer just now is, is very timely because the questions come in. This is actually from a researcher in Cambodia, a research assistant. They're working at a university in Cambodia. They have a master's degree from AIT here in Thailand. They're also a DAD alumni. And uh, they have a few years of working on international national projects. So would they be eligible? So I think you've just... You've please, just really please, yeah. yes. <laughs> okay, please Very apply, good. yes. Very good. Um, Very good. Another question here. And I, I think I know the answer, but um, they, the, the question is, do, do I need, in my application, do I need to have a German partner identified? No, not, not at all. No. No. This is not, uh, this is not the, the typical PhD research application where you have to do a PhD and need a, a supervisor or anything. No, I mean, even if there is no relation to Germany at all. So if you only cooperated with, let's say, Italy so far, and you have a good Italian partner and you want to apply with that research partner for um, European research funding something, um, that's fine. And even if you don't have any partner at all, even if you just have a research idea um, and you're looking for a partner, even then, you're you're highly encouraged, yeah. So I I know those people from Cologne, and I know they have an amazing network. And after running this pro grant series around the world, I mean, they've been doing that for seven years or so, and doing about six seven programs every year in different places. So they have been everywhere, and they know all the funding agencies. Trust me. And they know the partners. So um, they might just come up and tell you, hey, great idea. And yes, you can apply here or there. And you know what? You just go and ask this guy from Venezuela who is doing something similar. I mean, they might in the end even um, connect you to, to a partner. Yeah, I think, I mean, my, I've, I've not been through the program, but I've known about it for a number of years. And to me, what, what strikes me is, is a big advantage about this program is, it, is that you, you can tailor your proposal to the funding institution of your choice, the funding agency of your choice. So you're not locked into only a German funding agency, or you could be applying for a Welcome Trust grant in the UK or something in, in the US. So I think that's, that's the flexibility within the program is something that at least I see as being very, very attractive for a young, a young researcher. That it's a chance for you to build up a proposal with whatever funding agency you decide. Yeah. Um, there's another question, a quota question. 
So no country quota. How about research field quota? Is there so much set aside for humanities versus engineering versus? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, I, I, I hear that claim of, hey, those funding agencies and DADs, are, they are so biased and uh, typically against humanities and social sciences. But um, as, as somebody from the humanities, I have looked into it. And yes, we support less humanities than art sciences. But this is because we get less way less applications from humanities and social sciences. So if you want to make me happy and you're doing humanities, please apply. Yeah, if, if you can't, if, if you don't apply, then we can't award anything. You know, it's um, there is no quota and, and we are always happy if something, let's say, surprising shows up. I mean, we're we're also happy about the you know fifty seventh application from engineering. That that's fine, and we will support it. But if if somebody shows up with um, religious studies or music or something innovative, you know, yeah, sure, you you make us happy. Yeah, please <laughs> come up, <laughs> just hand in that damn application. Otherwise, we can't support you. So the, yeah, there's a message here. No, there's no bias against the humanities. And it sounds like okay. So so that's that's a clear message for all of you, you uh, humanities people out there or social scientists. It's not just about uh, the hard sciences, engineering, etc. Um, a question here. This is a this is a young, a young student, I guess, master's student who's on their way to Germany to study or will be. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're just they're they're beginning their masters in Germany. What would be your advice to them? So it's it's unlikely they have the qualifications now. Mm. What would be your advice to them? Now, I mean, because this program is running on an ongoing basis. So I guess one thing they could do is to keep track of when the next, you know, the next program comes up. But anyway, you're you're the you're the one to answer this. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, the, the easiest thing would be to to follow um, follow us on on Facebook and Twitter or, or Twitter. Um, or, or have a look at the uh, at your local DAD office uh, website. So be it DAD Thailand or DAD Vietnam, who are also responsible for for Cambodia, Laos, and uh, Myanmar. So yeah. And that leads me to a related question, which is a couple of people have asked here if they wanted to get in touch with alumni of this program, or maybe other DAD programs, what should they do? Um, well, <laughs> we, we can't publish um, contacts of, of our alumni. It's, it's not because it's a secret society or anything, but uh, you know, they, it's data protection, etc. So, um, I mean, Usually, if you just use Google and uh, you look like the, you can, for instance, look at, you know, the past events uh, with ProGrant and the look for the local experts. Yeah, then I'm sure you will find Tong somewhere mentioned uh, on that website. And then if you, if you Google for him, you'll find his uh, university address in Kuala Lumpur. So um, it, it is it is possible, you know, to to find alumni, and typically they are happy to say that they are DAD alumni or or pro grant alumni. And so, if you just use Google, I think you'll you'll find people. We we don't have the benefit of your uh, your Google search training that we've had at other yeah other <laughs> <laughs> another time another time. Um, this is another eligibility question coming at it from a slightly different angle, but is, is this program suited to a mid-career researcher? I think you kind of answered it previously, but yeah. maybe just... Hmm. Yeah, um, I would say yes. Yeah, sure. I mean, honestly, if, if we look at the, the situation in Thailand and neighboring countries, um, Many people don't do their doctorate when they are 25, you know, so really probably the requirement having a PhD already kind of means 
mid-career already. Um, yeah. yeah. So the, the ideal candidate has done everything super fast, is super successful and, you know, it's super relevant and everything, but you can't tick all the boxes. So, um, yeah, I, I think if you're, if you're in your, in your forties, you, you can still apply. Yes. So we're, we're getting towards the end of, of the session, but maybe Joe, could you just walk through, like if, if I'm, if I'm sitting in here in Thailand, Cambodia, Myanmar, Vietnam, where, what do I do? Next, what are the next steps I should I should be considering right now? The, the closing date is January fifteen, so there there is time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but maybe you could just walk us through the the steps you need to take beginning today, if you haven't already. Yes. Taken so um, you uh, follow the um, the the. Um, um, in the chat, and uh, this will lead you to the official call by uh, University of Cologne, and uh, I've printed out this uh, little PDF uh, guide. It's eight pages, and it will really lead you through the process. So it says exactly um, what needs to be in your expose. It has to be two pages, and you should address this and this and this topic. Um, so it is pretty detailed. Um, and uh, yeah, so you should write a good expose. I think that's the, the most important bit. Uh, work on your on your CV. Uh, please have somebody with good English skills proofread it, yeah, because English skills are also important. Um, and uh, get in touch early enough with uh, somebody up the uh, food chain at your research institute for that con uh, for that letter um, for that recommendation letter. And uh, well, then you bundle all of that. the The link where you have to upload it is also in this PDF file. So, really, this this PDF file at the University of Cologne website. That's um, that's your guideline for the next four weeks. Yeah, I, th I think, I mean, presumably all the participants who, who signed up, they saw the announcement and the link to the Cologne website is in there. And that's where you can get this PDF document. Uh, but what we'll also do is, if it's okay with you, Georg, we'll share your presentation with the Yeah, members. sure. And then there's the, we'll include, make sure all the links and everything that they need are, are are in there. I just want to make one point too about you know you 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 said uh, it's important to get in touch with the with your referee, you know whoever it is that's going to write you the support letter. Do it now and just not just with this program but any program start now because with COVID with people not always being in the office etc. You don't want to work very hard on the rest of your application and then you suddenly you know, can't get in touch with your referee. So if you are interested in this program, I think I would, I would suggest getting in touch with your referee immediately to give them the time to, to uh, start thinking about the letter they're gonna write for you. Uh, any final comments, Georg, from you? I think we're, we're getting close to, to yeah. uh, just uh, apply. <laughs> exactly, please. Yeah. Don't, don't hesitate, please apply. Uh, start the process now. You know, the, many offices yeah. are closed over the new year, etc. So now is the time. Okay, and if I if I could just I'll just some of because uh, there have been a number of questions on the same topic. Uh, so no quota. Agree. Um, if you don't have a PhD, you can be considered for the program provided you can justify or show that you're. Are contributing significantly to your research field, correct? Yeah. Um, you don't need to have a partner in Germany to, to, to apply for this program. Mm -hmm. and not um, any partner. I mean, you. It's even if partner. if even if it's just you with your brilliant research idea, that's fine. And if you are, in terms of age limits, if you're sort of mid-career, 
you hold an administrative position at the university, uh, you're still eligible to apply. Yes. And uh, I think I think those are the key points that have come up um, in the questions today. Maybe maybe one point that did not come up in the questions, but uh, that has been raised earlier. It does not need to be a university, so it can also be a research institute. Thanks for that, Georg. So, for all those NSTDA researchers out there, you're eligible. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Likewise for other researchers institutes in Thailand and elsewhere. Um, okay, well let's let's uh, let's wrap things up there. Thank you, Georg, very much for your time this afternoon. Thanks Thank also you. to Tom for his, his uh, uh, very enthusiastic and lively presentation. It was excellent. And um, we, you know, any further questions that you as participants might have, uh, you, can, you can address those to Georg, uh, I think, in, in, in the coming days. And, and we, as the organizers or co-organizers, will be sending you the presentation material, the relevant contact details. So with that, thank you very much, everybody, for joining. We hope you found it useful, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing lots of great applications for this program. So thank you very much, and good afternoon. Bye-bye.